Hello and welcome to The View from the IDB. My name is Silvia Pavoni, I'm the Economics Editor of The Banker, and I'm talking to Colombia's Finance Minister, Mauricio Cardenas. Thank you for your time, Minister. Um, so um, we're here in uh, Brazil, in Latin America, and uh, Colombia really has become a bit of a darling in the region. So investors have been really flogging to Colombia. Um, we were talking earlier about uh, record levels of portal, portfolio investments coming in the country and also the level of total investments over GDP, which is quite uh, big, 29%. Um, but are you concerned that all this foreign interest uh, is uh, may become a problem, that maybe the country may become overheated? Well, thank you, Silvia. Good talking to you once again, and uh, delighted to be in this special issue of the banker. Um, definitely, uh, we're very happy with the economic results. I think Colombia uh, it's not only being well treated by the markets, but it also has a good story, a good case to show. Fundamentals which are uh, fully aligned with uh, sound economic principles and sound economic management. We are happy to see uh, capital inflows. Uh, we're happy to see Colombia attracting more investors, uh, especially at the time when capital is leaving the emerging markets and it's going back to the developed world. Colombia continues to receive a significant inflow of uh, investment. And of course, that generates pressures and creates tensions, such as the one we're seeing on the exchange rate. But I think we can manage that and we can live with that because the ultimate effect of these inflows of capital in Colombia are to either build a stronger economy, uh, you know, more capital is always attractive, and, uh, and reduce the cost of capital for even for Colombian investors that are undertaking projects. So we see the good side of it, and we think the negative consequences, we can deal with them uh, also with uh, sound and prudent economic management. And the sovereign has already reduced its uh, cost of capital, hasn't it? Because uh, the yield has gone down in a week by how much? Yeah, that's uh, really uh, uh, has been a fantastic uh, source of news for us because uh, our 10-year bonds in domestic currency were trading at a yield of about 7.1%. Um, about 10 days ago, and as a result of uh, positive news, more investors being attracted to Colombia, uh, that yield is now on the order of 6.4%. So it's been uh, 70 basis points decline in the yield of a 10-year bond. Um, Colombia is also very interesting from a banking sector point of view. There are many banks, both local and international, uh, but a lot I know still has to be done on the financial inclusion front. And you were mentioning earlier about the initiatives that the government is undertaking. Can you give me some details? Absolutely. Colombia has come a long way in terms of financial inclusion. Now about 67% of the adult population has access to um, financial instruments. Uh, there is a bank or a bank correspondent in almost all the municipalities of Colombia. So we've made major changes in terms of access, but we need to make sure that people use financial services. Financial services are still expensive. Uh, a number of uh, commissions, fees, uh, charges uh, make it expensive for people. So we have to make sure that the base of the pyramid in Colombia um, is financially included and for that we're introducing legislation to create a lighter financial license, lighter than a bank, uh, specialized in payments uh, and transfers. Um, they're not credit institutions, but we think that that will put uh, a lot of competition in the base of the pyramid, as I said, and will allow more Colombians to, um, to use uh, modern financial instruments, um, more secure forms of payment, and, uh, and not use so much cash, which is the case right now. And so obviously we're talking about electronic platforms and systems which will modernize the banking sector. Now something else that of course the government is busy in doing is modernizing the infrastructure of the country. Uh, how much money is the government putting aside to develop the <coughs> PPP program um, in the infrastructure sector? Colombia is growing at the rate of about uh, four and a half, between four and a half and five percent per year. That's uh, GDP growth. Uh, it's very good. It's very positive. It's uh, one of the highest today in the world, but it's not enough to make sure that all Colombians um, are um, taken away from poverty. Uh, we need to accelerate growth. The, the, the initiative with the highest payoff in terms of economic growth in Colombia is investment in transportation infrastructure. That's our main bottleneck. 
we have that clear. That's been a major focus of this administration, the administration of President Santos. And therefore, we have launched a major program of investment in infrastructure. It's a $25 billion program. Um, it's a program that would take about five years to build. And the first phase of that program, it's about 12 projects, are now under bidding. It's $8 billion in CapEx for these projects that are under bidding, which will actually uh, be concluded, that tender process will be concluded in April, which means we're really moving forward on what is Colombia's uh, main economic bottleneck. And there is also a very interesting um, program of making sure that uh, the private sector companies involved in these projects um, are um, financially supported in, in the right manner. Um, so um, can you give me again details on, on this? Sure. All we're doing in transportation infrastructure um, is with the private sector. It's uh, essentially PPPs um, where the government of Colombia supports those projects by providing funds from the budget so that the investors get not just the collection of toll roads but also the um, contributions from our budget. So we want to make sure that these investments are attractive, that more investors are interested in participating in these tenders and that uh, you know we are able to build these roads um, uh, in a seamless way in, in, in a very short period of time. And so, so you were saying that as, as much as uh, these companies get in uh, tools, uh, then fees, then the government will match the same amount. So to make sure that the private sector company is supported adequately. Absolutely. We're doing matching contributions. Uh, it's almost one per one. One peso in collections of tolls, one peso in contributions from the budget on average, um, which also uh, makes these projects economically attractive because we have to say that investors are taking the risk, are taking the risk of construction, are taking um, a number of risks in relation to um, the um, traffic of these projects. So we are very happy to see that uh, allocation of risks and the private sector taking the responsibilities in terms of uh, the capital expenditures that need to be undertaken. So a very appealing proposition. Thank you so much for your comments. Thank you, Silvia. Good talking to you as always.